turnout. If I could have your attention, we're going to start over again. Um, I'd like to call the Opelika City Council work session to order. We have uh, just one thing that we want to do before we move into the regular meeting. I invite uh, Lily Finley to the podium to my left, and she's got a um, bids or a bid. Good afternoon. Logan. We're asking the council to approve a contract for LED floodlights and mounting adapters to be the opening date is February the 5th. The bid was mailed to 19 vendors. Three bids were received. Recommend the contract be awarded to Mayor Electric Supply on their bid meeting specifications on an as needed basis. Questions? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. We will wait two more minutes and we'll start promptly at 6 o'clock. If I may have your attention, please, uh, before I call the meeting to order, let me tell you that the room is filled to capacity, and we're going to have to quit letting folks in. And so if you are here for whatever piece of business you're here for, if you uh, get to say whatever it is you want to say or whatever part of the meeting, uh, there are some others outside that would like to come in. You choose. Sit. The meeting is start not started. But I think I will call the meeting to order. Uh, February 20th, 2024. Call roll, please, Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen? Here. Ms. Norris? Present. Mr. Agent? Here. Mr. Rout? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Uh, we are honored to have Marshall.
Corbett from the Bridge Church with us. We're going to ask Marcia to make her way to the podium right there. And then we will, and she will lead us in her invocation. And then Nora Leaf and Kinsley Oliver from the West Forest Intermediate School will lead us in our pledge, if you all would stand. Good evening. If we could all bow our heads, please. Dear God, please be with our government officials as they weigh the pros and cons of each constituent's request. Give them wisdom on how to best represent everyone. Father, we ask, we also ask that you give our leaders courage so that even when it's hard, they will continue to boldly represent you as you will instruct them of the needs of the most vulnerable. Strengthen them with wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens they carry. May they manage their teams and projects with love. Keep their hearts pure and their eyes turned toward your face as they work in the best interests of the people they are called to serve. We pray that as they hold office, <coughs> they will never lose the people's trust and confidence. We pray for their families. Keep them as well as they support these great men and women who you have appointed to serve your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You all have previously received a copy of the minutes of the February 6, 2024 council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Having none, they'll stand as presented. Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, have several items. Uh, first is the a combined balance sheet, income and expense statement for the month of January. Each of you have a copy of this. As always, if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. I've asked City Administrator Joey Motley to present the monthly building permit report for January. Good evening. I have the January report. Uh, we had uh, 52 new single-family homes the number we always look to is our indicator for what's going on, and we had another good month there. Uh, 52 new single-family homes at $13,283,855. Monthly total of $22,373,410. Our year-to-date um, is uh, we have 182 new single-family homes at $44 million dollars for a grand total of $125,282 a year to date. Uh, really, really good number. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, to Velma Lynn and also to Mel Mitchell. Before we start with this proclamation, gentlemen, we got something coming up in March. Would you tell everybody about that? Hello, everyone. I'm the Parenting 911 coach for Zelma Lynn. The city of Opelika so progressively has partnered with me to provide monthly parenting workshops for all the citizens, all the parents of Opelika. Our next event is March 2nd at 3 o'clock, Covington Rec. Please come out and join us to talk about different strategies and tips to be the absolute best parents we can possibly be. Thank you so much. We have a proclamation uh, for National Parent Leadership Month. And so now, explain your position, what you do. How are you doing today? My name is Tremel Mitchell. Um, I serve on the National Board for National Parent Leadership Month through the Children Trust Fund. Um, and so it's always exciting to be here because I have uh, done a lot of work with uh, Opelika. Um, and if I can take just a second, 
to thank you and everyone here. Uh, a little bit about my story. You see those two kids right there, kids coming up. Um, National Parent Leadership Month is really just showing uh, that parents are doing a great job. And I'm sure, how many parents do we have in the room? All right, that's a lot of kids here, okay? Um, and so my story is I was homeless with two kids and began to do a lot of work and got a lot of resources uh, that was provided by the city. Um, and then also I became the national lead and just recently appointed by the governor uh, to for Chitter Trust Fund Board uh, for the state of Alabama. And I always say thank you to everyone in this room because I wouldn't be a standing father without the support of the community. Uh, and it takes a village to raise a child. And so from that, I've been able to travel around the world, speak over 220 countries, just advocating for parents, fathers, and uh, all the great work that we're trying to do in our city. And so from my heart to you, your heart, thank you for allowing me to stand up and be a productive father because dad's present works. And I believe that. <laughs> is a critical and effective way to help families identify and build upon their strengths for themselves and their families and prevent child abuse and neglect. Authentic parent partnership occurs when parents have the opportunity to partner with others and present a parent perspective and lens to inform policy and programs that support the growth of protective factors leading to strong families and communities. Whereas the Children's Trust Fund Alliance is a national presenting organization, supports, encourages, and acknowledges partnerships between parents and community stakeholders, leaders, and policymakers is critical to developing strong communications nationwide. Parent partnership is successfully achieved when parents are partners in the planning, implementation, oversight, and evaluation of policies practices and programs that affect families and communities by receiving support and training and having multiple opportunities to share their expertise. Parents each year are partnering with others so together they can build stronger, safer communities where all children can thrive. Parents can have a powerful impact by sharing their lived expertise and they will continue to have a positive impact on the lives of families across our nation and world. National Parent Leadership Month is an opportunity to recognize, honor, and celebrate these parents. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I here shall have me of the great city of Opelika by virtue of the authority vested in me for playing February as National Parent Leadership Month. Somebody was talking about how pretty your hair was, and they said Sam had pretty hair too. I used to have pretty hair. <laughs> Y'all, we're, we're very excited to, to share that Oklahoma Parks and Recreation brought on three awards from the February 6th Alabama Recreation and Parks Association Conference in RMC. Sam Bailey, our director, was named the Jim Stone Professional of the Year. This award is named for one of the most respected and influential parks and rec professionals to have ever worked in Alabama. It's the highest honor that an ARPA member can receive. Congratulations. Thank you. The Opelika Recycle Teenagers Pastime Show. Y'all stand up so everybody can see these recycled teenagers. <laughs> How many of you? We'd like to pick 47. 47. 47. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, 
they have uh, forced strikes to draw captivity to arrest the Valor of Young and has allowed senior race 53 to 81 to perform at all the university women's basketball games. Mandy Moore, make your move dance video, was awarded the Community Service Award for her town volunteering with Opelika Recycle Teenagers Halftime Show. Over the past three years, Mandy has given more than 200 hours coaching seniors, creating choreography, and traveling to games for football. Thank you so much, Mandy. <laughs> Sam, any comments? Um, no, sir, I would say it. It's, it's easy for us what we're doing when you have the support of City Hall and a council like this who strongly supports recreation in Opelika. So that makes our job easy. We're very appreciative. Now, Mandy, what can you say about this recycle? <laughs> um, I can say that you're never too old to do something that you love with people that you love. Um, it's been the biggest joy of my life to really work with all of these men and women um, at the senior citizen complex part, and I'm so thankful to Valerie that she asked me to join in and um, help do this crazy idea that she has. And so we're, we have one more game. Everybody should come out to the Auburn women's basketball game on February 29th, and we'll be center court. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Council Trustee Norris is going to join me down the phone. I'd like to invite the uh, chairs to council and especially Miss Belinda Grace Turner to come up front, please. to council each month uh, goes by award and, and this month we're celebrating award two and the uh, council president um, Erica Norris has selected the recipient of this month's uh, character award. Ms. Norris. I'd like to grab my glasses and I'd like to read a brief statement because I wanted to make sure that I covered, um, not everything, because I couldn't possibly do that. We would be here all night. But Ms. Corlinda Jones-Turner serves as the Executive Director of Greater Key Community <coughs> Development Center with passion, exquisite leadership, and community focus. She has consistently established herself as a leader who has grown the program exponentially through grants, community donations, and lots of hard work. Ms. Turner can always be found fast at work creating programs for Greater Key Community Development Center that strengthens the core of our community. She hires workers from within our community. She offers opportunities for volunteering, and she is quick to support others in their endeavors. She is a true definition of a quality leader. And I also know that uh, Ms. Turner is, is a great leader at home because every time she's somewhere, her husband's right there <laughs> behind her. So congratulations to you. Very well deserved. Your goodwill toward mankind and our city is not found in measure. We hope that others will see your good works and model your actions. Please be encouraged to continue making a difference in the city of Opelika and throughout the world. Congratulations. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Norris. Uh, public hearing, Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first item under public hearings is a public hearing for the demolition cost assessment at 315 South 4th Street. I declare this public hearing open. I'd like for anyone that speak, would like to speak about for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and keep your comments to three minutes or less. My name is Lewis Gillis. I'm an attorney over in Montgomery, 1715 West 2nd Street. I'm here on behalf of the Prince Hall Masons objecting to the demolition and removal report. The demolition report requires certain specific information. In this particular instance, the bid invoice number 23042 has four categories of information, quality, description, unit price, and total. With regard to quality, there is nothing in here that indicates in terms of the demolition labor, the number of workers working on this uh, project, the hourly rate, uh, while there may be labor involved, I think this is the first time that I've seen where the labor cost comes out to zero and the experience that I've had in terms of developing labor costs at the different prices, you always have some sense that, uh, that is usually there. And because there is no description of the workers, nor their hourly rate, we would ask that this uh, demolition bid invoice not be uh, uh, passed. They call for machinery. They indicate that there were, there were uh, machines used to haul away the debris, uh, but there are no receipts showing the hourly rate the rental of these machines, uh, the number of hours that they were rented. They said that there were uh, diesel fuel that was utilized, but the number of gallons, the number of cubic yards taken away to the dump, the number of uh, bales of wheat straw, or the cost of even a site barrier was not listed in the one page document. I dare say that if this was public money that was being uh, consumed, that would be those receipts and everything else that would support uh, that bid. But in this instance, there is none of that stuff uh, at all. In fact, $5,500 was used or cost to remove the debris from a 12,000 square foot structure on 4th Street. Right down the block on 4th Street, it cost $25,000 to remove a structure that was 2,800 uh, square feet. In other words, if I could have gotten that first $5,000 price at the 1,200, then multiplied it, then it looks like I would be paying somewhere around $10,000 as opposed to $25,000 that uh, they're trying to uh, I get you to approve in this instance. I simply ask that you not approve it if you do anything, I would strongly urge you to uh, not allow this bid invoice to go forward, that you order the uh, demolition person, company, to bring in the specific receipts. Mr. Gillis, would you finish up, please, sir? Thank you. Others? That I declare this public hearing closed. Second item is a public hearing for the demolition cost assessment at 622 South 4th Street. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare this public hearing closed. Third item is a public hearing to amend the master plan for Brookstone Pud. This is 1001 Fox Run Parkway. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Oh, 
Can you state your name and address, uh, please? Jane Foster. It'll be 1078 Woodland Street Circle, okay. Jane Fox Road. Um, we are opposed to the additional uh, subdivision because no one in the neighborhood has been given information on the addendum and the addition to it. Um, I'm about to actually close up my house in a moment, and even though I've asked about it, no one in the sales can give me any information on it. It's also asking to be more duets than houses, even though the last time they came up, they actually asked you guys to make it more houses than duets. And also we think that the traffic onto Fox Run Parkway will be uh, not beneficial for everyone in the neighborhood. Right now, most of the people have to take a right out of the neighborhood. Go to Winn-Dixie, make a U-turn around and come back to get onto the interstate and head down to Auburn or other parts to get to work. We don't like that they're downsizing the lot size or any of the items. Uh, they haven't given any additional items in there, such as guest parking. They're actually asking for the driveways to be smaller. So people will be parking in the streets more now, which is against the HOA. Uh, they don't have any addressing any of the, they don't have mailboxes. Uh, post office won't let it, us have mailboxes. They don't have an area for the post office to deliver the mail in the new section. It would be way too crowded if they added it to the additional one that they already have. And also they don't have any type of pool system or anything like that, which they had actually built it for the first section, which now they're on the fourth section. And now this is going to add like five more sections. And um, we just think it's going to decrease the value of the homes in that area. All of us bought in there because we wanted smaller homes in a small neighborhood. And that's just going to defeat the entire purpose of it. So we ask you that you vote no, get more information, or get them to redo their plans to be more like the first that they did than they are now, making everything smaller, more crowded, and less amenities. Thank you. Thank you. Other? Good evening. My name is Jeff Neely and I live at 1288 Woodland Circle. My wife and I moved into Fox Run Village last July. We're very happy with Fox Run Village. We're very happy with uh, Holland Home Builders. We're extremely unhappy with this proposed new section coming in. And we have specifics that bother us a lot about what's happening. And in fact, had this proposal been in existence when we bought, we would have to really have some serious debates on whether we really wanted to move into this community. The community as it stands right now is spectacular, people are wonderful, and it's very well laid out. What's gonna happen in this new plan? In a negative way from my point of view, the ratio of single family homes to duets is way out of kilter. We're gonna move from the community that currently exists to a community that is dominated by duets, which are essentially duplexes, which is not what we bought into our community for. Increased traffic. Right now, all of the traffic comes down Village Drive. I beg you just to drive down that street. You might need to get your car realigned by the time you reach the parkway. Just imagine what's gonna happen when this opens up and all of that traffic goes down Village Park, uh, I'm sorry, Village Drive. It's gonna be a disaster. There's only one way in. It's gonna go down Woodland Circle. And when that gets clogged up, it's gonna go down the next street. And when that gets clogged up, it's gonna go down the other part of Woodland Circle. They're gonna have a massive construction backup. They start at six o'clock in the morning and those cement trucks are not quiet. And they love the speed at six o'clock in the morning. Next big problem, in my opinion, is a massive increase in street parking. There's not enough parking in these duets for two cars and three cars. We have people now in, with four or five cars. And it's really fun to see them try to stuff themselves into the driveways so they don't park on the street. It's a serious problem. 
It's going to get worse if this goes through. The next thing, this eventually, when we take over the board of directors for the HOA, it's going to create a potential divide between the duets and the single family homes based upon the way the ratio is working itself out. I see that as a potential problem because as you know, if you serve on an HOA board, you represent the entire community, not just some other community. What does this mean in my point of view from my home value and the home value of the people that are already there? With this dramatic increase in duets, you're gonna have a dramatic increase in renters. And there's nothing wrong with renters. I got great renters as neighbors, but this is a dramatic increase in renters. It's also a major, major opportunity for Airbnb and short-term rentals. Will you finish up, please, sir? Yes, sir, I will. And if you don't not haven't seen short-term rentals, it is not fun. And that's what usually happens in a lot of these. Last but not least, no, I'll say no, sir, no, no, I love Fox no, Run. No, sir, I'm sorry. You're finished. Yeah. I love Fox Run. I just don't want to see the value of my home go down. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Others? And I declare this public hearing closed. President Smith, fourth and final public hearing is to amend the zoning and ordinance map at 414 North 10th Street. This is 1.24 acres from an R2 to an I1. I would like to say that not only the ordinance for the public hearing we just discussed or had people speak on, but this public hearing, neither one will be voted on tonight unless the council suspends the rules. So that will go to a second reading if the council does not suspend the rules and will not be voted on tonight. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Hello, I'm Ann Renfro Smith. I live at 610 North 9th Street. And I am the only Renfro that still lives in the city of Opelika. My great-grandfather, Frank Renfro, or my great-grandfather, Frank Renfro, built the home in 1900. And my dad, Frank Renfro, grew up in this home. I lived in this home just for a brief time as a small child. This home is one of the finest examples of Queen Anne revival architecture in the state of Alabama, and we are fortunate enough to have this amazing piece of history in Opelika. The city has been so vested in preserving historical structures. And in this day and age, it's very difficult for a family to purchase this home and then put hundreds of thousands of dollars in to restore it. I cannot think of a better use for this unbelievable home than for it to become a beautiful bed and breakfast for local citizens, visitors, and generations to come to enjoy. The Mira home, which stood where the Church of Christ stands today and was built by Noah Renfro, was torn down years ago before the city became so interested in saving historical homes. I urge you to rezone this piece of property for the sake of preservation. What a travesty it would be for this magnificent home to be gone. I cannot imagine our city without it. I'm going to say, don't destroy the house. I realized that we had given it to the Catholic Church there, and then you got thinking about it and thinking of all the stuff they might do or what not do or whatever. It is a prime, it is a present to this city. We have a lot of beautiful old homes that we need as part of our history 
to keep here. We can figure out something, whether it's a and b whether it's a, a special place like the house that's on this street, <coughs> where they turned it into a place where people could come in and have weddings or receptions and stuff like that. We need to consider our past and preserve it. Because if you don't preserve past, we're going to be doomed to feel it later. That's my, my idea. spent most of their lives in Opelika. My great-grandfather is Forney Renfro Sr., or Jr., excuse me. He was born uh, in that house in 1912. He moved back to that house in 1953. And that is where my grandmother and my Aunt Ann and my Aunt Julie and my Aunt Ruthie and my Uncle Trailer all grew up. Uh, that house, uh, to me, right, they're not in Opelika anymore. Um, I, I live close to my grandmother, but the rest of them are all, all around the South. That house is a part of my family's history. Um, and on behalf of them, I would like to say uh, that we I would, I would, excuse me, I'd like to urge you guys uh, to approve the movement uh, to change the zoning. I sat here last Thursday and listened to the plan for the bed and breakfast. It sounds like a wonderful plan. It sounds like something they support. And I know from talking to my grandmother and my aunt um, that they do support it, all the siblings. Um, and so uh, that house is a part of history in the city. That house is a part of history for my family. Um, I'm Colonel Garland W. Padgett, Jr. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. I'm a friend of the youngest two Renfro's that lived in that house. Forney Renfro, or, or tra Forney Trailer Renfro and, and uh, Amy Ruth Renfro. And they asked me to come here to talk about their home and talk about their family. Because it, the house is more than just a, a beautiful piece of architecture. It is a piece of American history. The Renfro family came from Scotland in the, in the 1600s. He moved into Virginia. And one of the Renfros lived next door to a guy named George Washington when he was a kid. And they played together. They were friends for life. William Renfro went with George Washington as an adult and spent the winter with him in Valley Forge and with him at Yorktown when Cornwallis's army was surrendered. The Renfro family then spread out. Uh, some of them went west. You know, west then was anything on the other side of the Blue Ridge Mountains. They went to Kentucky. And they formed a family in their, or had their family in a valley that's still called Renfro Valley. Two of them came south. They came in this area. Uh, one, of the, one of the brothers that came in this area died, and his wife Nancy brought their four children to Opelika. That's how the Renfro's got to Opelika. Two brothers started a, uh, a lot of different businesses. They were in the grocery business here, and then they started a bank, the Renfro Brothers Bank. And in 1886, that bank morphed into the first national bank of Opelika. And it was the bank in Opelika for 112 years until it was bought by you know, mergers and acquisitions that banks go through in the modern era. That bank and the brothers that ran that bank financed most of the downtown area here, many of the homes here. They were the economic engine that moved Opelika from 1900 to the late 20th century. That house was uh, moved into by the youngest of the, of the brothers, Forney Jr., and he had five children in that house, the youngest of which are, are my friends in North Carolina. It would be a shame for that house and all the history that's associated with the Renfro family to be lost. This is probably your last opportunity to do something about it, because the house is in such disrepair 
because there's a good chance that it's going to be torn down. This is an opportunity for people that want to restore the house, put it to a good use for this community, and keep it in the name of the family so that it can be preserved for this town forever. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Gary LaRue. Lori, my wife, and I own the house at 408 North 11th Street, which is across uh, behind the Renfro House and across the street. We moved from to Opelika from New Hampshire two years ago to be closer to family. Our son in Auburn, our, my wife's parents in Huntsville, our daughter in Austin. We were attracted to Opelika because of the quaint and blossoming downtown, the charming neighborhoods that are walkable to downtown, the interesting history, and the sense of a resurgent and welcoming community. With many events like Food Truck Friday and the Opelika Songwriters Festival that are events unusual for a town this size. Our first introduction to the charms of Opelika was through a weekend stay at an Airbnb downtown. That planted the seed of a lifestyle here, living within a 15-minute walk of downtown and a 15-minute drive to the rest of Opelika and Auburn. From this experience, I see the benefit for small accommodations like Airbnbs and bed and breakfasts such as the Heritage House. They enable visitors to experience the charm and potential of Opelika. So I support the idea of preserving the Renfro House by converting it into boutique lodging. I think the location along 10th Street can accommodate the light increase in traffic from overnight guests. Aaron and Allison Kovac and Jonathan Wilmarth have established their reputations by their local projects, their vision for Opelika, and stated commitment to the Renfro House. I believe have, they have the skills and integrity to restore the house and preserve it for the community. My one concern, which is shared by many neighbors, is that the bed and breakfast venture is not sufficiently profitable to be a sustainable business. That will open the building to other uses by the zoning, and we would likely lose the charm of an historic home serving as an entry point for visitors to explore the uniqueness of Opelika we could well see increased traffic and noise in the neighborhood. At the informational meeting last week, I heard a couple of ideas for protecting the residential nature of the neighborhood should the Renfro House venture not succeed, either making a bed and breakfast an allowable use within residential zoning or some type of restrictive covenant or deed that would limit future uses of the property should it change hands. In the spirit that has carried Opelika forward, I hope we can find a creative arrangement that preserves this historic property by supporting the vision that Allison, Aaron, and Jonathan have articulated while protecting the historic character and the home values in the neighborhood. Thank you. couple of questions, kind of like to poll the audience, if I may. By a show of hands, who in this room lives in Opelika? <laughs> who lives in the Northside Historic District? Who lives within four blocks of the Renfro House? <clears throat> I think that the real question here isn't the emotional play here. It's the zoning. I grew up in Mobile. You want to see what the, what a mistake and a zoning change does? Go drive through historic districts in Mobile and see houses next to nail salons, fast food restaurants, and vacant homes now. We all in this room, as I think last week, want this house preserved. 
the question is, do we want it rezoned? I do not. And I hope that y'all will not. Good evening, Steve Locke. I live across the street uh, from the Ren uh, Renfro House. And, and we, my wife and I bought into the history and the historical district by buying the McCall house and putting time, effort, and money into it. And truly, nobody wants to see that house torn down. I would have no problem with a bed and breakfast, but like Clay, if you rezone it, the problem is the future and what can happen there. And I don't want to live across the street from an event center. There's enough noise on Sunday afternoons, sometimes with the Catholic Church. Uh, and it is strictly a part of the fact that we do not want it rezoned. If there could be some covenant like has been said or some way to allow a bed and breakfast there, I think we could live with that. But I don't want an airport or something else which is in that zoning across the street from where I am and what I put time, money, and effort into. So. We would oppose the zone change, not necessarily the bed and breakfast. Thank you, and apologize for my beeper going off. I'm on call. cell phone number and I will take a picture of my backyard. I live behind Advanced Auto in Burger King. While you have the chance to save that historic house so that something commercial isn't your view of your backyard, I urge you to save this home. We lived behind a historic home. My brother was serving in Afghanistan at the time and planning had decided to go ahead and take it down. We are doing our best in that neighborhood and if you guys could possibly drive by if you haven't been behind there where Stern Park is. Sorry, I'm really nervous all of a sudden. <laughs> Ridiculous. Can you please put five seconds back on there real quick? Um, I come from a place that they've had to in Providence, Rhode Island, it's right outside, we live in West Orkwood now. They're having to restore different homes and make them for different uses. Um, the time has come here Homes are over 100 years old. They're huge. They were used and people stayed in them. They didn't travel. This next generation, they're, they're traveling. This is what they want to do. We also have an Airbnb. We have a business here and we need places. One of them I can for sure tell you, the Heritage House. We get business. The way, and somebody had said something about how do we support it if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't work out, it's going to turn into something else. Well, let's support it. Let's support ventures like this. This is revenue for the city. It's revenue for our businesses. People want to visit this town. Trust me, that's why I stayed. My daughter's back now because she realized how great Opelika was. She left, she's back, she wants to be here. She wants to help us with the business. She's going to school here. Give this an opportunity. I just, I, I hope that that can be something. I understand guys, like you, you know, there's fears about rezoning. <laughs> I live in a place that the transportation of the school system didn't even know what school district we were in. Um, we, we really do have this unique thing to turn this into a beautiful something that no one else has. Um, we need young people here, and now I'm like the old person that's saving this kind of stuff, I feel. But this, this brings people to us. It keeps your businesses running. And I just I guess I just wanted to say that. But if anybody wants my cell phone number, I'll show you my view. with it being a B&B, &B. 
but I worry about if it doesn't make it, there's a good possibility. I mean, how many times has a heritage house been up for sale over the years? And, um, you know, it could have become anything. Um, I, 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 we have enough um, sound and noise from Second Avenue, which I knew that when we bought the house. Um, I could see more traffic. Problems with noise ordinance. You know, what time do they shut off a wedding party in the front yard, you know, or the backyard? Or um, I just don't want it to be left up to becoming something else that takes away from, in my opinion, the prettiest and most desirable neighborhood that Opelika has. And I would love to preserve the house, but I also want to preserve our neighborhood and keep it as a residential community that we all love. Thank you. My name is Tony McCarty. I live at 515 North 10th Street in Opelika and see the Renfro House from my front porch. Nobody wants to see the house going down, but everybody up here has used one word today, is neighborhood. That's what we live in. We live there. We're not real happy with the fact that there might be a business right across the street from us creating more traffic and more noise. I mean, the people that are, are wanting to open this business aren't even going to live in the neighborhood. Now, I mean, if we can figure out a way to save the house without rezoning that, area, that spot, I'll be open to that, but I don't want that spot rezoned and have some sort of institution right across from where I live. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Benson. My wife and I live in the historic district at 712 6th Avenue. In fact, I was actually born in the family home at 410 North 8th Street in the historic district and grew up there. But I spent almost all of my adult life living next door at 400 North 8th Street in the historic district in a home built by my grandfather in 1913. Since then, a member of the Benson family has always resided there and still does to this day. Maybe the reason I'm so old is because I've lived in the historic district all this time. <laughs> <laughs> this matter comes before you from the Planning Commission recommendation. It was the unanimous recommendation of the well-qualified staff that served the, the Planning Commission. And after careful study, recommended that this be rezoned. This was rejected by the Planning Commission without any discussion or without stating any reasons. The, and it's up to you as the City Council to accept this rejection or to vote to rezone and protect this beautiful house and important house. It represents the very outstanding Renfro family. 
which have been so important to the history and development of Oak Lawn. You are the last chance for this iconic home to be rezoned and put to good use as a boutique bed and breakfast home, similar to the Heritage House. In the alternative, you can vote not to rezone. And I think the result of that will be that the bulldozer will take it down. That tragic result need not occur, but it reminds me of a poem which states, of all the words of Tom or Penn, the saddest of these, it might have been, it can be saved. To do the right thing on this serious issue is up to you as a city council because you are all the city's responsible guardian. Thank you. I'm Julie Locke. Um, I live at 501 North 10th Street, um, directly kitty corner from the Renfro House. Nobody wants the Renfro House taken down. That's just a fact. However, if you rezoned this area, it could be to the detriment of the historical district, and that would be a, a shame. Um, nobody wants Opelika to turn into Auburn. No offense. I used to live in Auburn. But money-wise, it's looking like it wants to go that way, and it's a shame. Um, that house can be updated. We did it. We've lived in our house for 15, 20 years. My husband longer than me. But we built on a back deck to enjoy the area. And we had to abide by the historical district. And we had to jump through hoops to get it done. And we had a fantastic architect. And he did a great job. So we know what it is to keep a house up. But there's other ways besides rezoning it, and I am so against the rezoning of this area. Thank you. Megan Perdomo. I live at 1015 4th Avenue. Um, I'm about 800 feet away from this house. I look at it every day off my front porch. I've been at every single public forum and have spoke about this issue at every public forum. I spoke at the planning commission meeting about my concerns. I spoke at the town hall regarding my concerns didn't go so well. And now I'm sitting here just as a resident saying that I'm against the institutional zoning. I do not approve of that. However, I'm not against a conditional use permit for this house and I've never been. I think I've got two, uh, a question for you guys, and I don't know if anybody knows the answer. Sir, can you state your name and your address, oh. please? Bob Butson. I'll give you the address in a moment. Remember, I'd like everybody to remember that initially when St. Mary's Church bought that property, the intention at the time to expand the parish because it was growing exponentially over there was to actually tear down that house and to build a big, a much larger church. Now that would have created a lot of problems as far as traffic, especially on Sunday mornings. And what they're proposing to do now is a fantastic idea and I hope it's, I hope the, the planning commission and city council and everybody else can work it out and find a way to do this and just take care of business properly. The question I have is years back, across on the other side of 10th Street facing 4th is like a, 
townhomes that face Fourth Avenue across from the other side. They were built many years ago. Did you have to do any kind of a rezoning there? Are they considered to be residential or did you have to rezone that piece of property because they tore down houses to put those up? Does anybody know? That's more my day. Uh, so I think something they can probably maybe look back in time and see what they did in order to, to build those houses because that's part of the residential district as, as well. And, uh, you know, they certainly weren't there when we first moved down, but they got built afterwards at the expense of some of the houses that were down there. So I'd like to find out if, if in fact, back then, if somebody did rezone it just to put up those townhomes, or I don't even know if they call them townhomes or whatever they call them, but there's six or eight of them there facing 4th Avenue. So it'd be nice if somebody could take a look at that and see if they found a way to get around a problem at that time. Chip Mayfield, I live on 414 North 9th Street, exactly a block away from where the Renfro property is. Um, the Renfro house is beautiful. Uh, I don't really understand why this is uh, a do or die uh, for that house. Uh, I don't see why it's either going to get bulldozed or we have to pass the rezoning. Uh, I'm very opposed to the rezoning because it opens the door to lots of things that we won't want. My name is Lee Watley. I live at 400 North 9th Street, and I'm against the rezoning. Um, I just want to point out that even the real estate agent for the church at the town meeting stated that the plan at the meeting, quote, they have not threatened to tear it down. They have not threatened to tear down anything other than a private home. Therefore, it's important that this decision is not based on tearing down the house. So my, my question is, I don't know why we're debating it's either tear down or it's got to be rezoned. I, I, I don't understand why we keep going there. It's, it's, it's not necessarily going to be torn down if we don't pass the rezoning. So that's my question. I mean, do you feel like it's one or the other? Because I don't. I've, I've never heard that. I've never heard anybody threaten to tear it down. And there's multiple solutions to not changing the zoning and preserving the house because no one wants to see it torn down. I live in a big old house. It had to be restored. I know what it takes to do that. So I'm not coming as a naive person to know what you have to put in a house. And people that own old houses love them, cherish them, cherish the history of them. And so I don't think this is a one or the other. So I just want you to really consider what the Planning Commission unanimously voted against rezoning. And let's look at other options of how to keep it as a residential home and preserving the house. Thank you. My name is Philip Routon. Uh, I live at 515 North 10th Street. If you don't know some of the old timers, that would be Miles Thomas's old house. Um, I guess when I move out, it will become the Routon house at some point. <laughs> um, I've been there for 20 years. Uh, we moved here from Texas, glad to be here, love it. Kids have been raised here. Uh, don't wanna see the house torn down by any means. It's not not why we're here. Don't wanna see redevelopment, uh, but I am opposed to the rezoning. And, and by the way, my wife would have been here, but she's out of town on business, so there's both routing. So thank you. Craig Carr. I live at 406 North 9th Street. Uh, I can see the steeple of St. Mary's Church from my backyard. Uh, I've lived in the historic district for 13 years. Uh, I oppose the, the rezoning. 
uh, in the beginning, I really didn't see an issue with it. Uh, I thought, it, you know, it's between two churches. It might be hard to sell as a residential house or whatever. What has happened in my beautiful neighborhood where we push baby carriages, we walk dogs, neighbors talk to each other from their front <laughs> porches. You know, we used to talk about grandkids. We used to talk about our families. We used to talk about the Auburn basketball team. Now we're talking about the Renfro house. It has divided our neighborhood. People have told me, it's not a big deal, just give it a chance. Well, it's already done harm. Y'all have divided our neighborhood. And that's my main reason for opposing this. I changed my mind, and I now oppose the rezoning of this house. Thank you. I'm try to spread out my speech between a uh, few people and my dad. It's hard to follow him. So, uh, Rush Denson, 400 North 8th Street. Um, I would like to first say that I'm 100% in favor of the rezoning in order to save the Renfro home. Not only am I the chairman of the Historic Preservation Commission, I'm a neighbor and and I own. I'm an owner and broker of a local real estate firm. Being chairman of the, Pres of the Historic Preservation Commission, our mission is obviously to preserve property such as the Renfro home. As a neighbor, I, be I believe having one of, if not the most significant homes in Opelika preserved not only enhances values in the neighborhood, but it also gives the city an opportunity to showcase the neighborhood and city, and city to out-of-towners with the intended use. As a realtor who wakes up every morning trying to find people to move not only to Opelika but to the historic district in many cases, the likelihood of finding this buyer uh, that's willing to commit the necessary funds to bring this home back to a livable condition but also maintain it beyond its is like finding a needle in a haystack. The previous two times this house has been on the market, and don't hold me to this, but I believe that it was on the market for seven years and two and a half to three years. This home is currently in a state that cannot wait for a buyer to emerge that is willing to do such. The history of trying to sell this home will tell you all you need to know about the difficulties of finding that buyer that some are certain will evolve. The idea to preserve this home was taken to the Planning Commission staff and it was recommended that this zoning change was the best way to, to save this home. This recommendation by the Planning Commission staff was rejected without any discussion or reason despite much, in, much misinformation being distributed. At this time, I would ask the City Council as elected by your constituents that you carefully consider the voices of those that are, in or, that are trying to save this home and uh, do what you were elected to do by voting to protect the past and preserve the present and future of our beloved city. Should this not be passed, the unintended consequences far exceed the option on the table. And for that, I encourage you to look beyond a few, a few, uh, loud, a few while loud opposition and approve the rezoning of the Renfro home that will ultimately save one of our most iconic homes built and owned by a family that we, cannot, that we can celebrate and call one of our own. Thank you. George. I live at 106 North 4th Street. Um, I've lived in Opelika my whole life, um, and my family has started a small business here. I'm very involved in the community and what is to become of it. Um, I am in favor for the rezoning of the Renfro House. Um, I attended my first town hall meeting last week, and it was really fun and exciting to see how proud people are to live here. Um, and this makes me that more um, excited to be back after you know, leaving for a little bit. Um, I just wanted to say that preservation um, is a big part of Opelika and why I love it so much. It's so important to have um, support for something like this. Um, I remember from the last meeting, someone said that they 
had a house that they bought and they have redone it. And many of y'all have said that you guys have a lot of old houses in the historic district and have put so much work and effort into it. And I just like to say what would happen in 10 to 20 years after everybody's gone, what would become of your house? What if someone couldn't take it anymore? It was too much work. Wouldn't you want someone to take care of your house the same way you did? And I know nobody here wants it to be destroyed, but that is the route that it's going. And I know a lot of y'all have said that there are other options and there's other people that, there's many solutions, different ways that this can be saved. But I believe if that were the case, it would have already been presented to you. I just wanna say, as a 19 year old, I don't want this house to be gone before I am. I do want this to be something to outlive me. Um, and I guess I just ask what your legacy wants to be to your grandchildren and children here. Thank you. Aaron Kovac, 1117 West Collingwood Circle. I'd like to explain to to you why I'm so passionate about the Renfro House. 20 years ago, I moved here from Canada, married Allison Wilmark. As historic preservation and restoration is my passion, I was amazed at how many historic properties were in one small area. During the last years, I have served on the Main Street Board. Now I serve on the Historic Board. I've restored eight properties in the downtown, and I've consulted in many other buildings that have been restored and are one of a kind downtown. I'd like to touch on three subjects today. To me, Opelika was built by many hands who shared the same vision. A vision that brought community together, a vision that brought entertainment together. As a vital part of this community, the Renfros built a home that shared this vision for themselves and with the community. To think that I have lived here for 20 years and didn't know this history of this story. I've been enthralled by the story of the Renfro house. This story gave me inspiration to bring back the home to its full restoration. If the house were to disappear because of difficulty selling it, so would the memories of the Renfros and the Andrews. To me, when I look at the beautiful two-story Victorian, I see the efforts of their vision. Transferring the ownership of this property to us immediately puts it back under the jurisdiction of the historic commission. This will give the, the much needed protection to the home and the neighborhood. The condition of the house. After spending many hours investigating this condition, I found many areas of this house that needed immediate restoration and foremost attention. These areas are the reason why I believe no one has wanted to purchase the property. They are causing settling its foundations and a situation that has never been an issue with this house. Mainly because the house was so well preserved and looked after. I think some of the main problems that people think is the kitchen. I'm not referring to the kitchen. The kitchen is the easiest part of the restoration. I understand the concerns from some after explaining our vision to restore and conserve a significant story of our town. I hope it is clear that our desire is to create an environment that will enhance the community and that we will remain willing to structure this zoning request as best to meet the needs of our community. We remain committed to our honor, the vision, the story, and the love the Renfros had for our town, Opelika. In closing, it is my belief that even included in our opposition, there are no one that doesn't want us to do what we say we're not going to do. What is being opposed is how we do it. We employ you, City Council, to help us find a way. My name's Patty Quinn. I live at 815 Sixth Avenue. Full disclosure, I'm Rush Denson's mother-in-law. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but as a neighborhood, um, I, I respect y'all's y'all's position because the reality is everyone's not going to agree, and I disagree with the neighborhood that we have a problem. 
we're all mature enough people to have a difference of opinion, but still live together in a neighborhood. We don't have to be at odds against each other. I mean, that's just, that's just not the way it is. We're all mature adults. My concern is I'm for it. I don't see any better use for this property than, than for uh, the bed and breakfast and that Allison and Aaron have proposed and Jonathan. And uh, to vilify them like they're trying to break the neighborhood up, that's not true. They're just a young couple that made an offer on a home that has a great vision for it. So you're, you're not the problem. So I, I hope that I think part of the issue too is like what's going to happen to the rest of the property that the church has. I feel bad for the church. They have a piece of property they need to sell. They're not a rich parish. They need the money. So finding something that everybody would agree on, you're not going to find everybody to agree on. It's just, it's not going to happen. People that live on 10th Street, I get it. You look, but you've, you, live, you bought a house on 10th Street that's a main street. You bought a house where there was two churches and already events going on. I see this as less traffic than what you're dealing with now. Um, as far as the rest of the property that the church has, if you leave it like it is now, I hate to see it all torn down and new construction going there, new housing. I don't think any of us want that. We want to see these homes preserved and we want to see, um, see the, the area preserved. But as far as our neighborhood goes, we're a good neighborhood. We'll, we'll get through this. I, I, you know, I just don't see that um, people have differences of opinion. It's always going to be that way, but I just um, hope and pray that y'all make the right decision. And I, I feel like that it's there's no better use than what it's going to be. And I think an institutional thing is a lot better than a commercial. Or there's not going to be an airport going on that <laughs> piece of property. I mean, come on. So um, I think that's great, but I mean the way it is now. Everything could be torn down, and I think a new construction could go in. How would y'all like that? Y'all wouldn't like that either. So, so anyway, God bless you. Good luck to you. I hope you vote for it. Now I regret coming up here because I'm not going to be as fun. Um, I'm Emily Key. I live at 614 8th Avenue. So we're neighbors, actually. <laughs> um, I don't need to say anything that everyone else has already said. I agree with everything that everyone has mentioned in regards to approving this rezoning. I have been to 39 countries around this world, and I still keep finding myself back in Opelika for a reason. Every small, quaint village that I've walked through, even historic homes that have been torn down or redone and all the different things, Opelika doesn't do that. We don't take something and ruin it. And I don't think that this is ruining anything. I think this is going to improve Opelika. It's going to bring more people to my neighborhood, especially as a bed and breakfast. I want to be able to walk my dog past that house and actually have new people who are experiencing Opelika for the first time wave at me while they're enjoying their stay. And who knows, maybe they'll love Opelika so much and move here. And Mr. Motley's... Um, the numbers that we get every single city council meeting, they're going to grow the more people that want to come here and build bigger houses. Um, and as Ms. George said, in 20 years when some, some of us are gone and those houses are up for sale, someone who stayed at this bed and breakfast might come back 20 years from now and continue restoring. Uh, so I just I approve the rezoning and I hope you guys you know, go that direction. Thank you. Allison Kovac. Um, I'm at 1117 West Collinwood Circle. Erin Kovac's wife and Jonathan's uh, sister. Um, we've caused quite a ruckus here tonight. Um, honestly, I wasn't aware that there was any opposition to our plans until the zoning meeting. And it became apparent to me that night that there was a lot of misinformation circling through the neighborhood. Um, my lack of clarity may be responsible for some of that misinformation. Uh, so the next day I set out on foot and um, I went out to collect the viewpoint of all the neighbors in the Northside Historic District. 
I was very nervous to knock on the door of strangers, um, but it turned out to be a truly rewarding experience. Um, I had many folks invite me into their homes, residents in their 90s who have been here all of their life. I heard lots of great stories, um, and the support of what we were trying to do was overwhelming. Mr. Charles Albert Smith, who has lived one block from the Renfro House for 70 years and in the historic district since 1927, remembers a much livelier time for the Renfro House. It was a community home with a lot of life, light, and activity in his childhood. He remembers seeing Samford Hall um, from the tower of the brother's house next door. The twin houses were known as the Dames of Opelika. Um, the brother's home was torn down in 1958. It's where the Church of Christ now sits. Uh, Mr. Smith is strongly in favor of the rezoning, and he thinks that this is a positive move for the future, and that is 97 years of wisdom speaking. Meeting the faces of the neighborhood were truly it was the best gift of this experience, and I will treasure it regardless of how all of this turns out. Um, it further developed my love for the people of Opelika. At first, I was clear out clarifying a lot of information, and then by the end, I had people coming out their front doors when they saw me walking down the street, <coughs> excited to talk to me because they heard I was coming. I went to every home. Not all responded, um, but out of the 86 households that I made contact with, 76 homes signed in favor of the rezoning. I have that petition here. Two residences signed a form to remain neutral, one home signed an opposing document, and then I collected seven verbal oppositions who declined to sign. I think most of them spoke here tonight. Um, some of the other things I did notice while I was on my journey was there's a number of vacant homes and disintegrating homes in the historic district. I knocked on doors with no one dwelling in them, and it was numerous. We need more life in the historic district, not less. Um, we need heartfelt investors who care about the atmosphere of our community. Many people have stated to Aaron and Jonathan and I that this isn't personal, um, but I think it is, and it should be. Uh, this is not just a business decision for us. My brother and I were born and raised here. I lived in California. My brother lives in Atlanta. My husband's from Canada. Alabama is not our best economic opportunity. We are investing here because it is personal. We are rooted and we are deeply invested in seeing that the city of Opelika is restored, healed, and thriving. We are passionate about this being a legacy for our family, and it is way more important to us than a balanced book. So thank you guys for your consideration. Okay, I don't uh, mean to uh, to stop this, but uh, I think we all have a clear understanding that there is a a uh, movement of uh, in favor, and and there's obviously some people that are not in favor, and uh, we will be taking that into account, and we will be, we will not vote tonight as. Uh, Mr. Jones stated earlier, but the vote will be at the uh, next council meeting. Uh, and unless someone has something to say that's different than what we've heard, then I would like to uh, move on in our, in our meeting. Is uh, any opposition to doing that? Okay, I declare this public hearing closed.
I didn't know about all that. No. And I mean, I get it. They just do that. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say something during, something during discussion and see if we can postpone that to next week. council meeting, see what we look at it for. But I would draw like a postponement instead of a, a tabling so that we have a time frame because we can't discuss tables. So, and that gets on my nerves. <laughs> okay. If I, if I, if we can, <clears throat> if, if, if I can encourage you, uh, if I can encourage you to have your discussions outside, please. <clears throat> Hello. If you all would uh, either be quiet or go on outside. Thank you. Agenda-related public comments, Mr. Jones. Okay, now will be the time. If you'd like to speak to the Mayor and Council about something that is on the agenda, please come to the podium with my rep. If you have not already, please sign in with your sign-in sheet. Use your name, address, cell phone, and email. Please state your name, your address, and speak. You have three minutes left. Thank you very much. As well through planning commission and everything with our project um, with the first rezoning that was talked about. Um, I feel like I feel really good having two come out of nothing. Um, but we did not as well. That's why I was trying to catch catch one of the two uh, people that came up. Just happy to, to talk and answer any questions, concerns that they have. But just wanted to address that the lot sizes, the products that are being built, it's the exact same plan, exact same lot sizes, parking, same. Uh, the duets actually have uh, higher parking ratios because you have a parking place for every bedroom. Um, so I'm with you. If somebody's got five cars at a duet, we're, we're, we're going to be with you. The, the, the developer, HOA, everybody's going to be um, on, on the same board as that because there shouldn't be any street parking uh, in the community. And we're just trying to continue. Uh, we have a high demand for product uh, in that community and just trying to continue. Anybody has any questions or anything, we're here to answer. And are you uh, going to meet with the HOI, HOA gentleman? Um, I, I just spoke to him, and he seemed, he seemed pretty happy. But, yeah, if, I, I told him to reach out with any direct questions that needed to be had. We actually still um, run the HOA. Okay. Not even open. You haven't turned it over? You no. have not turned it over? No. Okay. But that will be happening. So. Okay. Thank you. Having no others, we'll move on. General business, Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first item under general business is a request for a downtown street closure for a business after hours event on February 29th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call a roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Nor? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Second item is a request for a downtown street closure. This is only for the start and the finish of a long distance bike ride on May 11th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have it done. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Nor? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Third item is a request for a downtown street closure. This is Workout Anytime Opelika's Down the Tracks 5K event on May 25th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have it on call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Nor? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Fourth and final item is a request for a downtown street closure. This is for the Touch a Truck event on June 8th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Nor? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Bids, uh, Ms. Family? We have 
Jackson and Castle to approve a contract for LED flood lighting and mounting adapters. The bid opening date was February the 5th. The bid was mailed to 19 vendors. Three bids were received. Recommend the contract be awarded to Mirror Electric Supply on the bid meeting specifications on an as needed basis. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Aye. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rowe? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Thank you. Thank you. Resolutions, Mr. Gunner. Mr. President, the uh, first resolution approves travel expense reports submitted by Patrice Lipscomb and Matthew Battles of the Parks and Recreation Department, Griffin O'Connor of Economic Development, Scott Parker of Engineering, and Mayor Fuller. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a call a roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number two authorizes the mayor to dispose of certain unneeded surplus personal property belonging to the city of Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number three authorizes the Parks and Recreation Department to purchase new rail and installation services from Train Works Global LLC for a sum not to exceed $44,796. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? <coughs> I have an eye. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number four authorizes the police department to purchase 11 mobile police car radio systems from Motorola Solutions at a total cost of $67,889.69. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number five authorizes the police department to purchase 10 in-car camera systems from Motorola Solutions at a cost not to exceed $139,950. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number six authorizes the police department to purchase 10 uh, police car uh, lighting packages from emergency lighting by Haynes at a total amount of $226,017.60. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number seven approves an Alabama 811 membership agreement to be entered into by and between Alabama Line Location Center and the City of Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an on call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number eight uh, approves the reclassification of two positions in the, in the Economic Development Department. The first position to be changed would be changing the job title for the classification of Talent Attraction and Retention Coordinator to Project Manager Workforce and changing the position, uh, reclassifying the position from pay, pay grade 17 to pay grade 20. The second change would be to reclassify and change the title of the position of project manager to senior project manager and to uh, reclassify the pay grade from pay grade 19 to pay grade 21. 
Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Just a quick question. Uh, are both these positions currently filled or are they to be advertised to be filled? One is filled and then one will be advertised. Which one will be advertised? Okay, thank you. Others? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 10 authorizes the city to apply mm -hmm. to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Number nine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Number nine uh, is a resolution uh, naming the Covington Center Water Park in honor of Robert Floynoy. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Before I ask for a roll call, I want to thank uh, Councilman George Allen for bringing this recommendation first to the uh, Parks Board and then to the uh, Mayor's Office Administration and then to the City Council for the uh, recognition of Mr. Flournoy, which is very well deserved. Thank you for doing so, Mr. Allen. Uh, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 10 authorizes the City of Opelika to apply to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, also known as FEMA, for an assistance to firefighters grant to construct a burn building for the fire training center. The estimated cost of this project is $650,000 and the estimated local match is $59,091. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 11 authorizes the City of Opelika to apply to the Alabama State Industrial Development Authority for an Alabama Site Development Program grant for the extension of North Park Drive and the construction of a new bridge across Hallowaki Creek. Uh, the total estimated cost of this project is $4,037,280, and the estimated local match is $2,018,640. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? <clears throat> Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 12 approves an assessment in the amount of $25,154.12 for the demolition and removal of the buildings located at 315 South 4th Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Abstain. Ms. North? Nay. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Three ayes, one nay, and one abstain. Motion carries. Resolution number 13 approves an assessment in the amount of $5,626.59 for the demolition and removal of the buildings located at 622 South 4th Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 14 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $2,500 to the Domestic Violence Intervention Center. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 15 approves a special appropriation to the Leadership Education Achievement Partnership Service Incorporated in the amount of $1,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. 
Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Ordinances, Mr. Gunner? Uh, Mr. President, uh, ordinance number one is uh, is for the council for first reading. It comes to the council with a positive recommendation from the Old Black Planning Commission. This is an ordinance to amend the development plan for Brookstone PUD. Uh, the portion of Brookstone to be uh, uh, to be amended is consists of about 24.05 acres, and the Amended development plan calls for a mixed residential development consisting of 43 single family homes and 90 twin homes. Uh, ask for a member of the council to introduce this ordinance. It's my pleasure. Mr. Sage, thank you for doing so. Mr. President, ordinance number two is also before the council for first reading. It comes to the council with a negative recommendation from the Opelika Planning Commission. This is an ordinance to amend the property located at 414 North 10th Street from an R2 district, which is a low density residential district, to an I1 district, which is an institutional district. Ask for a minute of council to introduce the ordinance. It's my pleasure. Ms. Norris, thank you. And we're now at the uh, second roster of public comments. If you have something that you'd like to address the council on uh, that is not on the agenda, uh, come to the podium to my left and please uh, uh, limit your comments to three minutes or less. Good evening, City Council Mayor. In celebration of Arbor Week, you both like a beautiful decided to announce our annual tree seedling giveaway. It's aimed at promoting environmental sustainability and the importance of tree planting in our community. The event will take place this Saturday, February 24th at West Ridge Park. We are inviting everyone in the community to come out and get a tree seedling and take it home and plant it. And we want to thank our sponsor, Land and Trees Unlimited. And again, it's this Saturday, the 24th, from 8 to 10 at West Ridge in the upper parking lot or upper fields where the schools play. There's two parking lots. We're trying to make sure everybody knows where we are. And also, while I'm here for Keep Up Like a Beautiful, we have partnered with the city for our Be Litter Free campaign. We have nine painted trash cans around town uh, to help clean up the city and get the litter cleaned up. You can encourage people to do that, share everything we put out from the socials, the city, Keep Up Like a Beautiful. That'd be great. And also, on Saturday, March 16th, we have our biannual shred day. It's going to be at the 8th Avenue Recycling Center. And the first Saturday of May is our Garden in the Park. South Long Street, uh, at the dead end of Alton Court, there is no turnaround, there is no, it's like a dead end, there is no access from the opposite direction for emergency vehicles to travel to and forth, uh, in and out of there, should there be a fire or an emergency in terms of sickness or something of that nature. I would like to see this property uh, opened up from one end of Frederick Road through Alton Court, as it has been at one point in time. Part of it has been <coughs> paved, leaving Frederick Road down to approximately, oh, maybe two, three hundred feet, but there is no turnaround for the garbage trucks. There is no turnaround if there's a fire. Vehicle, there is no access out of there in case that one side gets blocked off. You're trapped in the dead end at the dead end of Alton Court. I would like for the public works department and the mayor and people that uh, maintain our streets in this area to take a look. Club in the rear 
dark down there. And like I said, there's one way in and one way out. And you know where there's one way in and where there's one way out? People tend to take advantage of that opportunity to escape. I'd like for you guys to look into it for safety reasons, most of all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. Okay. I, in all of the things that they said, I did not see a water that's, that's accessible to people in wheelchairs. There is a water feature, a splash okay, park. Okay, I didn't. But they've got to be able to drink water, not a water thing. Oh. Yeah. They also, I did not see a, list, uh, a bathroom. Some of those other places, they're now Dixon and, and some of those other places on the other side. I thought <clears throat> your time's up, Miss Mickle. Well, you know where I am. Miss Mickle. I know, but you know where I am. Your time is up, please. Others? <laughs> you know you cannot. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, <laughs> the character trait of the month is leadership, the action of leading a group of people or an organization. <clears throat> Call roll, please, Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. 